wondering, why in the world has this girl picked climate change to talk about? Why not something more interesting? Something more innovative? When I first signed out to do TEDx and I told my friend about it, she was really excited. And then I told her that I was going to talk about climate change. And I just watched her face lose all interest. But this made me kind of nervous. But then I realized, if we have so much evidence that climate change is taking place, yet we choose to conveniently ignore the impending forecast of doom, then addressing and breaking the social silence on climate change was exactly what I needed to do. My tipping point for environmental advocacy was last year, when I was learning about pollution in my AP environmental science class. We had just begun to watch a movie about the effect of both chemical smog on the air quality. Now, the movie was in Chinese, so I couldn't understand all of it. But there was one thing that the narrator said that really stuck with me. She said, more than 5.5 million people around the world are dying prematurely as a result of air pollution. 5.5 million lives are being lost due to something that we could have and we still can control. Most of you, perhaps all of you, have heard about climate change and the gravity of global warming. Living in Shanghai, we can literally see the effects. Thanks to pollution, we rarely see blue skies during the day and stars at night, and we're forced to wear masks to school and to work. However, there are still many people that deny that climate change is taking place. So why do they say this? Why is it that when we go online and type climate change, we get a handful of websites and articles that say that it's real, and others that dismiss it as a hoax? With their fossil fuel consumption rising every year, fossil fuel companies are becoming more and more powerful. Some of these companies finance organizations that advocate against climate change. These organizations then hire people with impressive credentials who can convey their points across. Thus, we get websites, news articles, and even social media updates that climate change is unreal. Next, I would like to talk about why is it that the people who do believe in climate change tend to ignore it. The first, and probably the most important reason, is that it's fairly invisible. If you try to evaluate its effects based on the visual observations made on a day-to-day -day basis, you might not understand the gravity of the situation. For instance, if you eat burgers and fries for lunch and dinner every single day, you might not understand what it's doing to your health. However, in a couple of years or in a couple of months, you would have definitely put on some weight and have some sort of health disorder. Although climate change seems invisible on a daily basis, it has disastrous long-term impacts. The second reason why people tend to ignore climate change is that it doesn't seem to have any immediate consequences. People tend to think, why should I waste my time thinking about something that isn't going to affect me today or even tomorrow? The third reason is that people tend to worry about things that have caused them significant historic destruction, such as wars and nuclear bombs. And climate change has just not done that to us yet. The fourth and the final reason is the bystander effect. We tend to think that someone else is going to fix the problem. Don't you agree that we don't take climate change as seriously? That we don't give it the attention that it deserves? We fail to realize that nobody else is going to solve the problem but us. Now, I would like to talk about what the future looks like if we keep going down the same path that we're going down right now. When most of us here think of climate change, we imagine polar bears clinging onto melting icebergs. Although it's true that icebergs all around the world are being melted, if the global temperature continues to rise, we will witness global sea level rises and global temperature rises on a much greater scale. First, let me address the global sea level rise. In 2015, when the colossal glacier 
the Jacob Shaver Glacier in Greenland moved. It displaced 4.16 square miles of ice in one day. If the entire glacier were to melt completely, the entire sea level would rise by half a meter. Now, in case that's hard for you to imagine, I'm 152 centimeters. So the sea level would rise up until my knee. And this is just one glacier. Various coastal areas are vulnerable to such sea level rises. Areas such as Miami, such as Florida, Venice, New York, and New Orleans. Major cities in Florida, such as Miami, are predicted to be submerged underwater by 2025. And that is just eight years away. Another consequence of climate change is its effect on the global temperature. The past 10 years have been the warmest on record, with 2016 being the hottest. The UN Meteorological Agency has released reports which forecast irreparable damage if the global temperatures rise above 2 degrees. Now you may wonder, why should I care about the 2 degree rise in temperature? Over the course of many years, scientists have been trying to figure out how much warming our Earth can actually take before it starts to detrimentally impact human beings. And turns out, right now, our Earth's temperature has already been risen by one degree. We're halfway there. And with our increasing fossil fuel consumption, the rate at which our planet is warming up is accelerating. We have now begun to enter this uncharted realm of climate change, which has been unheard of in history. And the faster our temperature rises, the more rapidly our crop yields falter. Now, I would like to propose a solution to the global warming problem. So, this solution is by Dan Miller. He suggests a fee and dividend approach. He proposes that we place a tariff on goods coming from nations that do not have a limit for their CO2 emissions. So countries that do have this limit and wish to export will be able to do so. However, countries that do not have this limit and wish to export will have to pay a tariff based on their estimated carbon footprint. Thus, this solution seems quite plausible to curb global temperature rises. <clears throat> Climate change is not something that we can keep putting off for a long period of time. To use Bill McEvan's words, Climate change is one of the biggest things that human beings have done to this planet. And the only thing that needs to be bigger is our movement to stop it. We all have to take the initiative to bring about a change. Now, I'm not being overly optimistic, and I'm not going to say that you all should go home and change all your light bulbs to energy efficient ones, or that you should carpool every single day. No. But we can all make small choices. Maybe smoke one less cigarette this day. Or maybe carpool once a week. All these differences can make a difference if we do them together. We have already wasted too much time denying and ignoring climate change. Too many lives have been lost and there a lot of people have been hurt. Today, we live in a world that requires us to wear masks temporarily. But do we really want to live in one? where we have to wear one forever? Thank you.